Welcome to today's tutorial from the Twin Safety Department. My name is Martin Früchtel from the Product Management Safety. I will give you a short introduction to our whole tutorial series and the first tutorial itself. Before starting with the actual tutorial, I want to give you a short background information concerning our tutorial series. In the past two or three years, we introduced a lot of new features to the TwinSafe world. We now have a new generation of safety controller with much more functionality and performance. But the really revolutionary step was the transfer of the safety controller functionality to each new TwinSafe component. So every new component you buy today has an integrated TwinSafe logic, which can be programmed like the dedicated safety controller. That implies much more degree of freedom for you and much more functionality within our TwinCat 3 safety editor. That's why we start now with a series of tutorials. We pick small examples with a narrow scope so that the examples are easy to understand and also easy to reference for us and for you, of course. Our goal is to go through most of the possible scenarios step by step. If you have any questions during the tutorial, just use the question window within the platform here or write me a mail. I try to answer a lot of questions directly after the tutorial, but if there are still questions remaining, I will answer them via mail these days. In today's tutorial, we are focusing on safe motion functionality. A few years back, we started with the AX5801 option card for the AX5000 series, which allowed the realization of hardwired STO functionality. The next step was the introduction of the AX5805, shown here, which allowed the control of safe motion functions via FSOE. The desired safety functions can be controlled via the FSOE process image, shown on the left. The configuration of the safety functions themselves is done with help of the safety parameters. So if you want to realize a safe speed functionality, for example, there is a set of safety parameters where you can configure this function. Afterwards, the safe option card is executing the safety functions according to the commands coming over the FSOE telegrams. But the safety functions still have to be within the limits of the device's firmware and can only be configured. That's why we took it a step further with the AX8000 and the integrated TwinSafe logic. If you buy an AX8000, there is already a safety project active within the safety option, but the default project only realizes an STO functionality which can be triggered via FSVE or hardwired. In order to realize more complex safety functions, like safe limited speed, for example, you can program the integrated logic. As soon as you choose to program the AX8000 as TwinSafe logic, you have internal process image and internal safety parameters available, which are shown on the left here. The internal parameters allow you to configure, for example, the primary and secondary feedback, the internal process image gives you access to all drive internal signals available for your safety application. So, for example, the encoder's velocity and position signal can be accessed via the internal process image. The safety application for the AX8000 is implemented with our TwinCare 3 safety editor like any other TwinSafe logic component. Our pre-certified function blocks are used to realize the desired safety functionality. This gives you a huge degree of freedom for the AX8000 safety functionality, but it is also a little complex because, as mentioned before, if you want to realize safe motion functions, like safe limited speed, for example, you have to alter the safety project running on the AX8000. And that is exactly the reason why we developed the new TwinSafe motion wizard. The wizard gives you the opportunity to create a safe motion project in a fast and intuitive way. And that's the topic of our today's first tutorial. In today's tutorial, I show you how you can create a safe motion project from scratch with help of our new TwinSafe motion wizard. 
Before we start with the actual demonstration of the TwinSafe Motion Wizard, I will give you a brief overview of the basic information of the TwinSafe Motion Wizard and our demo system concerning hardware, software and required safety functionality. After the demonstration, we will give a short uh, outlook of the following tutorials from the TwinSafe department and we will have a short Q&A in regard to the TwinSafe motion wizard. Within the tutorial, I want to show you how you can create and configure a TwinSafe motion project for, in our example, safe limited speed functionality. As prerequisites, uh, you need a Twinkle 3 version greater or equal than 4024.11, a TE9000 uh, Twinkle 3 safety editor version greater or equal than 1211. You need a TwinSafe firmware on the AX8000 greater or equal to 03, and at least you need an AX8000 firmware greater or equal than 0104 with the default module ID active. In the beginning of our tutorial uh, for the demonstration is an existing standard project. So we have a IO configuration, SPS project. We have an EL6910 project. The AX8000 uh, will be communicating with. When we look at our demo system, which is shown in the picture on the right, we have an CX for the Ethercat communication and the standard PLC task. We have an EL6910 as the master TwinSafe logic. So at the end of the tutorial, we want our AX8000 communicating with this EL6910 as master TwinSafe logic. We have an EL1918 for the safety inputs within our system. We have a light barrier connected to the EL1918. And of course, we have an AX 8000x2xx in the safe motion version. From the safety functionality point of view, we want to realize a very simple safety loop. We have a light barrier and the interruption of the light barrier should trigger safe limited speed on the AX8000. So the AX8000 is limiting the speed safely and the violation of the speed limit should lead uh, to STO on the AX8000. As mentioned before, we are starting with an existing TwinK3 project. So we have an IO configuration with our AX8000. And then via the context menu, Twin Safe Wizards, Safe Motion Wizard, we can start our Twin Safe Motion Wizard. So in the first step, we are choosing our existing AX8000. In the next step, we are configuring the feedback. So you have to choose from single turn, multi turn, or other motors. If you want to use NDAT uh, 2.2 safety, for example, you have to choose other motors. In the next dialog, you just have to choose which safety functions you want to realize. In our case, we want to realize safe limited speed on channel A on the AX8000. In the next dialog, we can rename our safe motion project to the desired name. And we also have an overview of the safety functions chosen for the channels. So here we have STO SLS1 for channel A. And in the next step, we are configuring the connection to the master uh, safety logic. So in our case, we have an ER6910 and we want to talk to both of the AX8000. Last but not least, we have an overview of the safe addresses, which are uh, read from the devices or can be configured manually. After finishing the wizard, the wizard is creating the new safe motion project and is altering the existing master project. So if we look at our Safe motion project. Now we have a twin safe group for each safety function and we have a multi settings file for during the parameterization of the safety functions. In our case, we want to realize the safe limited speed functionality. So within the table, we have the parameters for the minimum and maximum value for the SLS1 functionality. 
So we just have to enter our calculated parameters for the minimum and maximum. And afterwards, we are basically done. Last step we have to do is uh, downloading the safety project to the AX8000. So in our case here, we are using the multi-download functionality in order to download both projects at once. So activating the multi-download, we can choose our two AX8000 safety project. And we have, of course, to enter the username and the password for the AX8000. And once again, choose the two projects we want to download. Now the safety editor is doing the download to the two AX8000 and is then afterwards showing us the overview of the CRC, which we verify. And last but not least, we have to do the activation of the safety project on both the AX8000 at once. That was basically the realization of the safe limited speed functionality on the AX8000. So if you want to start up the application now, you can of course go to the online view, for example, on the AX8000. If you want to debug the safe limited speed functionality, you can have a look at all the online values to see which function blocks and which parameters are active and also take a look at the actual analog values within the safety application. The analog value for the velocity is showing a zero here because, of course, we don't have a connection to the EL6910 yet. We have a connection which was automatically generated by the TwinSafe Motion Wizard, so we have the corresponding alias devices, but we still have to do the linking to the internal logic. So in our case, we have to connect, of course, both error acknowledgement signals of channel A, and we have to stimulate the complete process image. So SS1 has to be uh, stimulated, the desired functionality SLS1 for the both uh, A channels has to be stimulated, of course, and same goes for channel B. So SS1 for channel B, the error X, and for both channels, the STO signals have to be uh, connected. Of course, in our case, we prepared the EL6910 project uh, to shorten our tutorial because it's always based on your current application. After doing all the connections, we just have to download the new EL6910 project with uh, connections from the logic to the alias devices. And after finishing the activation of the EL6910 project, of course, we have to do an activation of the configuration because the creation of the two new alias devices changed the process image of the EL6910. So we do a short activation of the configuration to get the complete new safety project running. But basically, those were all the steps you need in order to get your SLS1 running. We have an AX8000 project with the SLS1 functionality, and we connected it to an EL6910 project. So after activation of the configuration, we can look at the process image of the EL6910, and we see that all three connections to the EL1918 and the two AX8000 options are up and running in data mode. So basically we are done with the realization of our safe limited speed functions. 
Now example now, we have the light barrier connected to the EL1918. So the EL6910 project is sending the SLS1 signal to the AX8000. And now we can have a look at the internal values of the AX8000 and, and see that indeed the SDO and SS1 signal is coming from the EO6910. And within the arrow handling, we can have a look at the internal AX8000 signals. We see that uh, both signals to the AX8000, the SDO signal and the SS1 one signal for channel A are active. Basically, that was the content of our first tutorial. I hope I could give you a brief overview of how easy it is to use the TwinSafe Motion Wizard to realize a safe motion functionality. As mentioned before, that was only the beginning of a series of tutorials. In order to give you a short outlook on what's to come, you can see here a list of topics for tutorials coming in the next weeks. We are currently aiming for a one to two week interval between the tutorials in order to get the main topics done very quickly. If you have suggestions for future tutorials, don't hesitate to write me a mail. I want to thank you for your attention and looking forward to any suggestions for future tutorials or of course questions concerning today's tutorial.